My name is Gretchen Clyburn. I am 44 years old. I'm a certified financial planner. My husband and I met in college. He was a senior and I was a freshman and it was love at first sight. He's a retired military now and we have two beautiful children. One day I happened to be uh, having lunch with my college friend, Catherine, and she was telling me how she had started running. I joined a running group and um, found that I really enjoyed it. And so I thought I would try that out with her. Our first race was the Bass Pro Half Marathon in November of 2013. It was just absolutely amazing. They would announce our names as we crossed the finish line, and so it just felt fantastic. So then we thought, wow, I can't believe we did this. We're gonna keep going. The Go Girl Run was on April 19th of 2014. So we're running along about the ninth mile. There was a sound that you don't, you don't forget, you recognize something's not right. And I turned around and Gretchen was laying on the ground. We stopped, our whole group just stopped. I can see that she's convulsing like a seizure. We see a runner from the group that has collapsed and we run back, no hesitation. We know we need to help. And I screamed, I don't know what to do. So of those of us that responded from our group, Trisha has first responder experience, Stephanie as a nurse practitioner, and myself as a registered nurse with an extensive life support training background. We checked her pulse, and it was very hard to detect. I didn't have a clue what to do. And the decision was made to start CPR. I was so thankful that there were people that were around that knew how to do CPR, that even knew that that's what she needed. I had a difficult time opening her airway. And in fact, I was not able to get air into her lungs. It was that difficult. We did go ahead and they started compressions. Katie held a pretty firm jaw thrust so that we could try to you know, force in as much air as we could with the compressions. They swapped off multiple times during that time period with doing compressions to stay effective. I was getting tired. My knees were getting cut from the concrete. Cindy also was another person who had come up, who was a nurse as well. We were tired from the heat and the running, but you find the strength to go on because she has family, you know. Um, you reflect on your own family. I can remember thinking, am I watching my friend die? The adrenaline kept us going, um, doing CPR on her for roughly 20 minutes. But there was no other option. Yeah, there was no other option. Apparently, the ambulance was having a hard time finding us because at this point, we were not on a street. We were on a pathway through a park. Amy was our 911 person. She was trying to explain to them, you know, how to get to us. She was running back and forth trying to get landmarks, street names, anything that she could. We had a group of runners that were behind us that were praying over us, and we talked to Gretchen. We said, Gretchen, you've got to pull through. Your family's waiting for you. You know, they had already run nine miles too. They were exhausted and they didn't give up and they kept going and they kept going. What we thought of was that our own situations. Gretchen is a mother. She's a daughter. She was a wife. And that, that could have been us. So I would want someone to do the same for me. The EMS arrived at this time and they're able to put a full monitor defibrillator on Gretchen. They're able to intubate her. They're able to then perform successive shocks on her. I could tell by the look on Katie's face and I think she could tell by the look on my face, we weren't hopeful. Our concern, that even though she left with a heart rhythm, she'd been down a long time. And our best hope we felt at that time was that we had given her family the opportunity to say goodbye. It was almost 30 minutes before they got her to the hospital. Um, so they you know, were concerned about if she would ever wake up and, and what kind of brain function she would have. They had put her into a coma, but on purpose, and to help her brain and her body heal faster, less stress on the body. I'll never forget the days at the hospital waiting and wondering if, if she's gonna wake up. Then we found out they were going to let her come out of the coma, that she was responding that her speech was clear. And she is back 100%. She's a strong woman. 
I collapsed because I had had a cardiac arrest. I was diagnosed with the long QT syndrome, which is basically um, a, an electrical problem with my heart. They decided to go ahead and put in a defibrillator so that if my heart ever did that again, the defibrillator would kick in and instantly restart my heart back to normal heart rhythm. Once we walked in and saw her, it was just a wave of relief. It was like we had known her our whole lives after <laughs> everything we had been through. My life isn't the same as before. I can't run like I used to. However, what's really important is the fact that I am still here. Without the American Heart Association, um, I would not be here today. They have, have done the research to, to diagnose these issues, provide treatment, and provide things such as the defibrillator, uh, CPR training, all of those things are the reason why I'm still here. Now in this situation, you have people that have had extensive training in CPR for a number of years, but the skills we used, those are skills taught in the CPR classes. As a result of my experience, my firm has agreed to have CPR classes taught periodically so that our coworkers have the opportunity to learn CPR. You don't have to be a nurse, you don't have to be a first responder, you know, anybody can do CPR. Even if you just put your hands on the chest and press, you have started the chain of survival. I do think about the fact that if, you know, this would have happened to me 15 years ago, I wouldn't be here. And I know that there are many, many, many other people that have benefited from this research and new techniques that the American Heart Association has helped to fund. The American Heart Association really is key in saving lives. She calls us her angels. Those girls are lifesavers. That's, that's all there is to it. They stop to help a complete stranger. We don't feel we've done anything extraordinary. We feel like we were a small part. Very much. We were, we were just a tool that was in the right place at the right time. I'm so thankful to them for not quitting, not giving up. It really is too big to reflect on because it wasn't us. We told Gretchen, she has a purpose, she hasn't fulfilled that purpose, and we were there to make sure that she has the chance. God put us there for her. Yes. Because he's not done with her. I don't know why my life was spared, I don't know why I am still here, but if that's all it is, is just to continue to be here and love my children and let them have mom a little bit longer, then it's all worth it. I just want to enjoy every single day and each opportunity that I'm given. I'm Gretchen Clyburn and I'm a heart disease survivor.